Hi. Happy New Year. It's January 4th. It's 3.45. I'm getting a very late start to my work day because I have a lot of stuff going on right now. It's already been a weird, a good but weird start to my year. While I'm chatting to you to start this vlog, um, I'm going to pack some orders because I have a lot of stuff that needs to be packed. But it's really exciting because I have a thermal label printer. I am so obsessed with this thing. I'm so excited about it. I want to use it all the time. I love it so much. And it's already made my life just a thousand times easier because I was really, I was really making it hard on myself before. It's great to not handwrite stuff and I would, the whole process that I had before just, I've cut my time in half when I pack orders. Also for Christmas, my mom found me this, I think it's like Hot Topic or something and I'm so obsessed with it. It's so funny to me. She thought it was really funny too, that's why she got it and I just wanted to show you because it's so funny. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> okay, let's pack orders. So my month is starting off really weird because I don't really have anything to do. Technically speaking, my vacation is over. Like I am back to work officially, but I also don't have anything to do because I haven't opened anything back up. I need to do a shop update. My commissions are not open right now. And I have pre-filmed all of the videos that I'm going to, except for the very last video of January, I pre-filmed all the videos that are gonna be put out in anticipation of a surgery. So like I'm getting a, a minor jaw surgery. I've talked about these surgeries before. I'm, I'm getting a series of um, surgeries and they're really minor, not a worry at all. But it does put me down for the count for a few days. So I just felt like silly to open open up things like commissions or do a bunch of stuff for my shop right before I'm gonna be like out for half a week or a week. So now I'm kind of just like waving for the 10th to be able to like really do stuff again. The only thing I like kind of have to do besides like do shop orders and like post is I have to do my Skillshare class. I have to like edit everything. And that's literally all I have going on. And so I'm I'm just kind of like waiting. And so I kind of have like weird half days and it's been weird. I am really excited to get back into it though because I have big plans for this year. I wanna do things like make a website and a like newsletter and email list and a commission waiting list so I don't have to, I think it'll streamline a lot of the stuff that I'm doing. I, I'm also going to be updating my Patreon, um, which I'll talk about some other time. Actually, I'm, I'm gonna talk about it later in this vlog because I plan on doing it at the end of this month, but I also don't know for sure 100%. Watch how fast this prints. It blows my mind. Amazing. I love it. One thing that's great about this printer is I like there it has a software and I made for label printing and I made a template so all I have to do is copy and paste the address in and it's so much easier. Also, I like designed, I'm gonna cover up the address, but I made this little design for the label. So it has these little stars and I'm it's so cute. I'm so in love with it. But shipping stuff, packing orders is genuinely fun now instead of being like one of the most time consuming tasks I could possibly have. So yeah, I'm kind of just in limbo especially because like I my sleeping schedule is still messed up from like the holidays and stuff and I'm kind of waiting till after my surgery to fix it because I'll be knocked out on pain meds and so it's a great time to like adjust my sleeping schedule so I'm getting late starts and I'm not you know going walking and stuff in the morning another big thing that I want to do once I am done with <laughs> like the surgery and everything I really want to update my shop I didn't realize but I'm sold out of like everything so I need to do that um, I also probably want to get new business cards because this batch is from Staples and they're really bad. Like the quality just is not good. They're super flimsy. They're like, they're streaky and I've been using them because like I didn't want to waste them and they weren't cheap at Staples so I'm kind of mad about it. But yeah, so I need to kind of rework some stuff in my shop, not everything, just some stuff. And one of my big goals for like 2023 in general is really filling out my shop for things like stickers and smaller things. Things that will be like more accessible for more people and hopefully like increase sales. Although sales have been doing like really well, but I kind of want Etsy to be like a, one of my pillars of in, like I want like three different like main sources of income and I want Etsy to be one of them or my shop. So I really wanna focus on really thoroughly like filling out my shop. Yeah, I'm just feeling really energized, really excited about like the new year, going into a full year of like just doing art. 
things are looking good. I'm obviously coming off the high of like the holidays and AdSense and YouTube always does really well during December. So I'm like coming off that high, but I have really high hopes. I think the channel is in a much better place than it was in the beginning of last year. Um, like obviously I have a lot more subscribers now. And so there's just kind of a, a much broader safety net, I think. So a lot of the concerns that I started off last year with like, you know, numbers dropping really drastically or not making any money. Like a lot of those fears aren't really there anymore. So that feels really good. I think like my overall goal for 2023 in terms of like business stuff, because I share my art goals, but you know, I have stuff for like business goals. I think my overall goal is to make a living wage, <laughs> no matter how low that living wage is to make a living wage. That's about all I had to update you on. So I'm gonna keep packing orders and I'll talk to you later. I think I'll like you Etcher reached out to me. Etcher is a art supply company. I've heard great things about them. I think specifically about their sketchbooks. Um, and they, they offered to send me some supplies. So of course I said yes. So thank you to Etcher for supporting me, um, reaching out. They are paying for me to feature this, but obviously I'm not fully reviewing. All my thoughts are my own. I am thrilled to get to try these out. So they sent me a gouache brush set. I'm <laughs> using these for watercolor, um, but these brushes are absolutely gorgeous. They feel amazing. And I love this little package, the, the wrap that they come in. This is so fancy. I felt very, you know, fancy with this. And they also sent me a watercolor pad. It was actually a block, like one of those things that you have to like kind of tear around the seams of the paper, which I have never used before. I've never had before. So again, I felt super fancy. These supplies felt so fancy. I felt very high end and a little bit out of my league. <laughs> I was really excited to try it out, of course. I wanted to, I don't know if you're supposed, I've only ever seen people tear out the paper from these blocks, but then I feel like that defeats the purpose of it being a block. So I decided to paint right on like the entire stack and hope that I didn't ruin all the other paper because I wanted to see if, how that works.
worked and it ended up working out pretty well. So obviously I taped off the borders because I love me a border and I did a quick sketch of a portrait based on a picture from Pinterest and I went right in with watercolors. I was really excited to do this in watercolors because I had also gotten some supplies for Christmas that I wanted to try including a set of neon watercolors and some metallic watercolors. I love, I've been really into specialty art supplies lately. So I, I really wanted to give those a try. I was really excited to do this in watercolor specifically. And let me, let me tell you about these supplies really fast. I am not super knowledgeable on like quality stuff for watercolor. Like I kind of am a person who will use whatever you give me. But every time I'm given high quality supplies, I am reminded that I it's worth investing in high quality supplies. And I definitely am not into paintbrushes. Like I am not someone who worries about having high quality paintbrushes. I want to change that. These brushes changed the game for me. Oh my God. They felt so soft and velvety and luxurious on the paper. It was crazy. You guys, I'm like, I'm not kidding. Like it was crazy how beautiful they felt on the paper. And the paper was great too. It was super high quality. Not much to say, cause it, you know, it's paper, but it was paper that worked really, really well. And I really liked that it was on the block um, because that's new and, and kind of exciting for me. And I really, really liked that. But yeah, those brushes were just absolutely incredible. A joy to work with. They just felt so good. They felt so good. I didn't know brushes could feel that way. So yeah, I did a portrait. I was really enjoying working very wet on wet. Um, and you can see the neons um, are super vibrant. And I didn't know exactly how I was gonna be able to incorporate that. They ended up blending in really, really well. One thing that I always kind of struggle with, with specifically watercolor, because I generally use pretty low, you know, lower end watercolors. They're not the most saturated. And one thing I always struggle with is getting that like high saturation and vibrancy that I really want in my stuff. And I end up usually having to go back in with things like colored pencils. For this, having those neons to really punch up that saturation was so great. I love natural colors. Um, I obviously like, I love using that kind of stuff, but having those neons and using them as like undertones was such a cool effect. And I think it ended up so beautiful and they look so like soft and ethereal and they add this dimension to this portrait that I never would have been able to achieve with my regular colors. Using those neons is, I think that blue, the blue that I'm using this piece should also be a neon. The there's. I think a yellow, orange, pink, green, and blue. And I'm not gonna lie, I don't see myself using the blue and the green as much just because they look like any other color. Um, they're not really neons, but that yellow and the like the, the warm tones, I will be using <laughs> all the time now. Like they're so beautiful. And they're like a cheap, it's a cheap set I'm pretty sure from like Amazon. Like it's not like a fancy set of neon, but they just look so beautiful. And it's like that pink. It gives like, that's always a pink that I struggle to get. You know what I mean? Like I always want like really rosy cheeks and I'll have really nice reds to make that happen, but it's not the same as having a neon pink. I, I love it so much. I've been really into neons lately and I feel like I get more and more into it. So I'm just, oh, I really love the way this turned out. One thing I feel like I didn't use well was the metallics. Um, They are pretty opaque. I had swatched them in my sketchbook when I got them and I was really disappointed in them. They were not opaque at all, but I realized I just was not building up enough on my brush. So once once you kind of figure out how to use them, they're really great, they're really opaque, but they are still watercolors. So it was really easy to go over them and totally knock out that shine and metallicness that they had. Um, and so I don't think I employed those in the best way, um, which is a shame because I also love gold accents. I love metallics. So I would love to find a piece that I can use those metallics to their you know, highest potential. I recently just went to Blix and I got a gold oil paint and I'm dying to figure out how I'm gonna use that. I'm so excited. I love having a gold, I have a gold acrylic paint, now I have a gold oil paint, now I have gold watercolors. I just think golds are so beautiful. Having things like neons and golds, like those fun accessory type, like novelty paints, and art supplies are so fun to have. And I think they encourage and inspire a lot of play and experimentation, and they make you really step out of your comfort zone and just try different wacky things. And I think oftentimes you end up finding things that you end up really loving. Like I, using neons in a traditional portrait is not something that I would have really thought of doing. Um, and now this is something that I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna continue doing just because it adds so much and it's so fun and it's so cool. One thing that I was having like struggling with with this painting was that I was being really impatient. I was really loving the way that it was turning out. This paper is, it makes for great bleeding. Like it bleeds, paint bleeds so evenly and so beautifully and it absorbs really, really well. 
but it didn't dry super fast. And I was getting really impatient because I'm an impatient person. And so it kind of was at this really muddy stage and I was getting really sick of it <laughs> um, because I just wanted to be done with it because I thought it looked really, really pretty. I was like, oh, you know, I'll leave it. And the next day I was like, no, I, I can't just leave it like this. So I went back in with some colored pencils to neaten up some of the areas that really got lost. And after that, I think it, it added a whole lot and it looked really, really gorgeous. I also added some freckles because I intended to do freckles and I totally forgot. I intended to do it with the watercolor. Totally forgot. <laughs> slipped my mind and so I added that with color pencil and I'm really glad I did I think that pulled it together I also used gouache for like the highlights and details that that's a step that I think is gonna be a staple for me I don't think that's cheating I don't even care I think it adds so much and I think it's worth doing <laughs> I don't think I'll ever not do that I think it really just ties everything together. It brings a lot of life to it. And I'm also not one for preparing. I don't like to uh, preserve paper, like preserve my white spots. Um, but so after that, I, I really struggled to like get it out of the thing. There was one bent corner and it actually worked out really well because that's where I could fit my palette knife in. Um, but I did not do this as aesthetically as the people on Instagram do. <laughs> but yeah, I, and I'm so happy with the result. I think it looks great. I love the neon. Thank you again to Etcher for sending me those supplies. I had so much fun with them and the supplies will be linked down below. Still super swollen, okay. Monday the 16th, I had my surgery Tuesday the 10th, so it's been just about a week. And <laughs> you can tell I'm still swollen. I mean, not nearly as swollen as I was. I was straight up like Lego head. Like no joke, no exaggeration, I looked like half a Lego head. So like for me, I honestly feel like I don't look that swollen anymore. Uh, and then I saw myself on camera. <laughs> I'm definitely still swollen, so you know, bear with me. I hope it's not too distracting or ridiculous. You saw me clock in. Today is my first day clocking in since December, so it's like my first official work day since my vacation. Obviously, I have worked, just not like a full day. Um, and I always get a super late start to the day. It's now 12.40. I think I clocked in at around 12.20 because my sleeping schedule is so messed up for my surgery. I intended, like I was gonna use my surgery as a time to get my sleeping schedule back on track because normally I've had multiple of like these surgeries. Normally that's what happens. The first two or three days I am like on my pain meds. And I'm asleep literally all day. And then like I wake up at like 7.30, like ready to go on, on like the third or fourth day. And I can get my sleeping schedule back on track. I'm like super well rested and it works really well. Unfortunately, this time this surgery was was really really hard on me it was like the hardest surgery that I've been through so far and it was really rough and I was in a lot of pain not a lot of pain just like a lot of discomfort for a lot longer than I'm used to and I was in bed like I was not doing anything I was like really just like out of it really out of it and I was not getting any exercise and I was getting too much sleep and then no sleep at all so like the past few days my sleep has been really bad because I've been like in pain and then also I've just been sleeping badly because I, if I'm not on a regular exercise, like activity schedule, I don't sleep. It's like really necessary for my sleep to get some sort of activity during the day. And obviously for the past week, I've been doing no activity. So like I did not get much sleep last night. So I kind of slept in and then I made sure to go on a, like a, a walk this morning and I worked out and I'm going to make sure for the rest of this week, every single day I go on, like I haven't even been doing like my nightly walks, let alone like my workout walks. So I'm going to make sure I get at least one walk in a day so I can get some sleep <laughs> because I I would, I would really like to be on a good sleeping schedule. I feel like when I have a good sleeping schedule, like when I'm up earlier in the day, that's when my life is together more. <laughs> and I don't want to start off this year like on a bad foot. So yesterday I started prepping for today being my first official work day. So I opened up my commissions. I think I have four commissions. I think I'm like waiting on one. I was only going to open three slots, but I had like two people message me at the same time. So I'm doing four commissions. I want to keep them. I want to do only a few at a time because I really want to work on doing quick turnaround. I do not want to procrastinate with them anymore. I want to make sure that like I'm doing them quickly and I can kind of keep that income coming rather than doing like a lot once every three months, you know? So I opened commissions. I also went through all my emails because <laughs> I was getting like email, like insistent and like urgent emails from companies who were getting really like impatient. Like if I didn't respond within a day, they would be like, are you still there? Um, so despite being very loopy on pain meds, I was communicating with quite a few companies. So I went back through my emails 
to figure out like what have I agreed to like what is going on like what am I about to be doing this year like this month whatever um making sure I didn't take any bad deals or whatever so I had to go through my email and like make sure I didn't miss anything and see who I had been talking to I decided to I like set my date for closing my patreon um so I made my new patreon promo stuff I'll put it on I'll put it here because hopefully by the time this video comes out my new patreon will be up my new tier so I'll put the information on the screen for you if you're interested please consider joining my patreon I have to sneeze I feel like I'm getting lower in the frame oh is my tripod I think my tripod is drooping hold on yeah okay I was kind of not start like that <laughs> Yeah, I feel really good about this update. Um, I think the last time I updated it was January of 2022. So I think it's appropriate to kind of start fresh. And I feel really good about these rewards. I said this last year and I think last year's rewards did work well, um, but I think I've kind of ad adapted and changed. And I think these new rewards are a bit more what people kind of expect from an artist. Uh, so I'm really excited about it. I hope you are interested. If so, please join. <laughs> oh, let me, okay, I wanna show you this. I've been really trying to get back into reading because, whoa, hello. I've been really trying to get back into reading because last year I just kind of fell off it. I read, but not like as much as I had been. Um, so I got myself a little TBR for January. I started rereading one of my favorite series last year, like in December or November or something. Um, so I'm in the, la the third book, there's four, but I'm not reading the last one. So I'm reading the last book. I've got about two days worth, maybe like 200 pages worth, maybe a day's worth of reading for that. And then here is my January TBR. These are all books I'm very excited to read. I did like a prompt generator. So we've got The Haunting of Hill House. I have been really wanting to read this. I think I tried a while ago and just like, but it was when I wasn't really into reading. So I'm super excited to read this. And it, honestly, it's not that long, like at all. Then we've got Yes Please by Amy Poehler. This is probably like a day's read. So like, cause it's mostly like, <laughs> like pictures. Um, so I'm really excited about this one. I haven't heard the best things, but obviously I love Amy Poehler. So I'm gonna try. <laughs> Outlawed by Anna North. I'm obsessed with this cover. I keep getting this confused for a different book, but I think I like, I know I'll like this one too, or like the premise at least, but I am in love with this cover. The cover is the reason I'm so excited, but I've, I found this at a thrift store and I was so hyped and I am excited. And finally we've got Girls of Paper and Fire, which I've heard really, really good things about. It's a sapphic like fantasy and I'm really excited. I've been finding that I've been really enjoying um, like YA fantasies and fantasy series. And it's like the hetero romances that really ruined those books for me like I tried Caraval and I loved the premise I loved the story it was just the straightness that really really made me not like that book and so I'm excited for a queer like fantasy I'm assuming I mean I'm really assuming it's fantasy I cannot imagine it being anything else so I'm excited for that because I've been really enjoying those stories just not the romance involved so yeah I really want to get back into reading I really want to focus on good balance I've got like my week kind of planned out um it'll be a lot of catching up kind of doing doing art, doing the vlog. I also have my Jeep. My Jeep is in the shop. The engine has just been shutting off on me, which is scary. And the shop could not replicate it and they couldn't figure it out. So I'm gonna go pick it up. I'm gonna replace the crankshaft position sensor. Hope that works. <laughs> I've got a lot going on, a lot in my brain. And I was, my camera is drooping again, whatever. I just got a lot in my brain that I'm trying to like keep track of because I was out for a week, obviously. And I'm a little bit stressed about it. I'm feeling a little high strung. Um, I think once I get back in the groove, I'll be fine. I think I'm a little anxious about like getting back into like waking up at a good time finding enough work to fill the day because it's i mean once you take a month off and you're like oh wow i could do nothing all day you know that's tempting but yeah i don't want to be anxious and stressed so i think i'm gonna do some art and unwind a little bit get some work done get some art done and chill out oh yesterday also while i was prepping i ordered a bunch of prints for the shop update um not a major shop update just like a restock mainly and like a few new stuff and i also made the decision that i'm going to try to make a new sticker at least once a month because i really want to fill out my sticker collection shop options. Yeah, I guess I thought I would just tell you that. I don't know. Uh, yeah, let's go. Let me stop stalling. Let's go. <laughs> I wanted to sit down for a quick sketchbook session. I've been struggling to work in my sketchbook for no other reason than I am tired. <laughs> I've been pretty busy lately, um, but I, I've been really, like I've been enjoying it. But for this specific day, I found, I watched some YouTube video and someone had been using a, I think a Pentel like brush pen and I have that in black, but they had a red one and it was so gorgeous. And I was like, oh, 
I need that. And so I immediately placed an order, <laughs> immediately. It was such a like splurge thing, but I'm so glad I did. It's just a fun supply. Like I don't really see myself using this on a regular basis, but it's a fun, cool supply that I've really enjoyed playing with. I wanted to use the pink because I wanted it to be monotone, right? And I thought that would really complement the red pen. And I still think that, I think it looks great. So I had a lot of fun with this. I grabbed a pink marker and I put like some base colors down and I lined it with the red. And I, I love that red pen, oh my gosh. But yeah, I was just doodling based off some pictures from Pinterest, nothing special. Not, you know, I'm, I just haven't been artistically inspired lately. So I was kind of struggling to find things that I thought like fit well, because I wanted stuff that would use, I wanted pictures that would need a lot of the red, like that would use a lot of the line art, um, which I kind of struggled to find. And I was relying a lot more on the pink marker than I was the red pen, but I still think it looks really cool. I love those colors together. The colors were, I was like, what are these colors remind me of and I they remind me of Tiffany Tiff Tiffany um, on YouTube she uses like this color palette a lot and I love it when she does it I don't think it quite works for me I think she has that great bubblegum pink aesthetic sometimes and it, it works so well for her I think she has specifically a, a comic maybe is what I'm thinking of that uses like the pink and the red and I remember seeing that and being like I could never pull that off she pulls it off so well and I think I pulled it off Okay, <laughs> um, and yeah, I had a lot of fun, very chill. I've been trying to be really chill in my sketchbook. One of my goals this year is to fall back in love with sketchbook keeping um, and not so much like make stuff that I like think looks good, but it's a bit of a struggle just cause like I said, I'm not feeling inspired and I like, I don't even know what I want to put in my sketchbooks. It just doesn't feel as easy to keep anymore as it used to a couple years ago. And that's, I guess what I'm really trying to work on is I'm trying to get back to that place where it's easy to do. I sit down and I'm feeling inspired automatically. Like I always have something to get down on paper and it doesn't matter what it looks like. That's what, I, that's what I'm trying to do. We're getting there. This is a good step towards that. Just kind of picking out a random photo and representing it with these very limited supplies. Limited supplies is I think a great way to have fun in your sketchbook. I um, mean, I've been doing that quite a bit. Yeah, I've been trying, I've been trying. We're getting there one day. I am in the middle of, oh, will you? You won't see this, okay. Sneak peek. I'm in the middle of a painting. Um, I'm trying these new paints that got sent to me. Really fancy, beautiful Paul Rubens watercolor set. They're like new paints. I love them, <laughs> I love them. I'm just like not feeling it. Like I haven't done a watercolor piece in a while and I'm just like not in the groove. I'm not enjoying, I'm not not enjoying it because I'm loving the paints. I'm actually really liking the way it's looking. I just like, I'm not in the mood. You know what I mean? Like I <laughs> keep stepping back and be like, I don't wanna do this. So I decided I would just stop for the day um, because I really want this to turn out well cause it's a make it gay and that needs to be good. So I really wanna turn out well. So I don't wanna do it when I'm not like feeling it and I'm not enjoying the process cause that's a recipe for disaster. So I, I decided to stop um, for the day and I'll get back to it in a few days and finish it then when I'm a bit more in the mood. Also, like I just haven't been, I haven't done a lot of art, you know, since like December, since before December um, for a while. And so it's just like getting, get, it's taking some time to get back in the groove. I'm not like super excited about art lately. Like working in my sketchbook is a bit tedious, not alarming. I just came off of like a really busy time. So I'm probably a bit burnt out. You know, I'm just trying to be patient with myself. I also, <laughs> My room is a mess. I also, another sneak peek painting I'm working on. Uh-huh. Oh my God, I just got oil paint all over my hands. So that is a giant oil painting. That'll be hopefully at the end of February if I get it done in time. And I'm having so much fun with it. I'm already loving the way it's looking. It's looking very, you know, like when like teenagers get their hands on, on oils for the first time and they love how it blends. So that everything's like super overly blended and, and rendered. Like that's what it looks like right now. And it's so funny, but uh, I really like it. So yeah, I'm just in the middle of a lot of stuff right now. <laughs> and my room is a wreck. Um, Yeah, I am gonna close out the vlog here. Literally, I wanna get better at vlogging. I'm getting so sick. I feel like every vlog is the same and I really wanna get better at vlogging and like not be in this room. It's just like, when I do do stuff, it's like I never wanna bring my camera and risk my camera or, you know, there's always a reason. There's always an excuse. But yeah, I really wanna get better at vlogging. Maybe that can be like a goal for myself this year is just like do 
better with that. Like, give me, let me know how you feel about my vlogs if you enjoy this structure. I feel like they're very samey, um, but maybe you like them that way. Maybe that's like, fine. It, it is pretty representative of what my life is like, but also I understand if it's boring. Just let me know and I'll work on it. But let me give you some updates um, before I close out. So I read, from the books that I read, the only one I'm currently reading, Outlawed, the only one that I think I won't get to at all is Haunting of Hill House because other books took priority. I really enjoyed Yes Please by Amy Poehler. Uh, it's the only celebrity memoir I've read so far that I actually genuinely enjoyed. I thought it was really interesting. There are a few pages here and there that I skipped, but I found her insight and her writing really funny and good and, and genuinely interesting. And then Girls of Paper and Fire I read and I loved. <laughs> it felt like one thing that I never got to enjoy <laughs> as a teenager was like the Hunger Games and like Divergent like craze. Sorry, my chair so loud. Not that I didn't read them and like them, I did, but like I didn't get it. Like the straight girlies, like they got it, <laughs> right? They got it. I never got it. Um, like this series is definitely like that for the gays and I love it. It's like very tropey, very convenient, um, but it's really good. I find it really interesting, the magic. Oh my God, okay, so apparently, so not apparently, but I realized like within the first page, you find out like that the magic system involves people having physical animal characteristics and like the first like character that you're introduced to has like a cat ears. And I really had to put the book down for a second and go like, give it a chance. Just give it a chance. <laughs> and I still am not fully 100% behind that aspect to the series, but I can look past it. Anytime I start to picture what a character looks like too too much, like anytime I think too hard about it, I start to hate it. <laughs> so I just, I just try not to do that. But it's a really enjoyable series. So I just finished the other day, um, the second book. And so I just went to the library this morning. I got there 30 minutes before it opened and I just sit in the parking lot. <laughs> and I just got the last book. So I'm gonna finish a book tonight and then I'll start this book for the last three days of January. Um, so picking up my TBR ended up working out really well and I'm excited to do it again for February. Doing bookish things is so enjoyable. Like, <laughs> like it's almost more enjoyable than the actual like reading. Like I love to talk about what I have read and like plan what I will read. Um, I do love reading, but that's always so fun. Uh, let me know if you want more book content in vlogs actually. That could be like a fun aspect um, that we could do. Anyways, also an update on my car, I wanted to vlog this, but it ended up taking literally two minutes. So there was not even time to get my camera out. Um, we replaced the crankshaft position sensor. Did fuck all, did absolutely nothing, shocker. Um, so we ended up changing the PCM out. Uh, cost $500 for a whole computer. Um, it's fine, it's totally fine. And I, it worked, thank God it worked. So basically it was just like a loose plug in an outlet type of situation. That's what everyone online was like kind of saying. And I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't wanna get my hopes up, but it was, it was, it's a very common issue for these Jeeps. Um, and it was my issue too. So my baby's back up and running. She's doing great. And do I trust her yet? No, but we'll get there. But so my life is kind of coming back together again. It felt kind of like things were falling apart, not in a bad way, just like I was being pulled in so many different directions in January and things are kind of settling back down again and hopefully that means I can get back into art the way that I want to. I've also kind of noticed that my videos are starting to feel in the same way I talked about this sometime last year in 2022. My videos started to feel really samey and effortless and it was just like speed paint and voiceover. Um, and I've been feeling that way about my videos again. So I hope I can kind of move forward and be a little bit more creative with them. One thing that I had been thinking about is I think like my art online and like my career and my videos are like, it's art centric. It's art first, video second. And so I think the videos will always suffer creatively because of that. And it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make in order to keep my art the quality that I want it to be. Like my the art piece isn't the video itself. Like I could make a masterpiece of a video, but the art would suffer. I don't wanna do that. Like I want my art to be the core of what I do. Sorry about my chair. <laughs> and I want the, like the videos are secondary. The videos are about and around the art, not the other way around. So I'm not looking to make movies, um, but I don't want every video to feel the same. So I need to work on that. But like, I really do only have so much creative energy and <laughs> I, it, I would rather that go to the art rather than like the video. I'm feeling very high strung lately. I, like I said, I've just been, been pulled in a lot of different directions. Um, and I've been really exhausted the last few days. I don't know. <laughs> I'm excited for January to be over, honestly. Also, Shafa is updated, new stuff, go check it out. Patreon is updated, by the time you see this, check that out. Yeah, really and truly give me feedback. If you have feedback from me about my videos, specifically my vlogs, I would love to hear it because I wanna make videos that you enjoy watching and my vlogs are something that don't naturally come to me. So like, let me know. Anyways, I'm gonna go. I hope you had a great month. 
I hope you were less busy than I was. Can't wait to see you in February. Go read a book. Watch my other videos. Go to some art. <laughs> Bye. Hi. Not me actually trying to vlog for realsies. Is the halo, does that work? We're actually slay. <laughs> slay?